From the pages of MikeHuckabee.com, where you'll never find riots, looting, election interference, and fraud, but you will find my columns full of sober analysis and even some humor. Let's take another look back at some of the week that was. And every day, every hour even, has been one to fill a wall of history books. And if you never want to miss a beat, just sign up for my totally free newsletter at MikeHuckabee.com. That way you get my insights delivered right to your email inbox twice every day. Well, Americans, of course, went to the polls in record numbers. In fact, it was the highest turnout for an American election in 120 years. That's right, highest turnout since 1900. The so-called silent majority got loud and clear at the ballot box. Millions of Americans decided that the America they know and love, the land of freedom and opportunity for all, where the people are in charge of government and not the other way around, are going to be protected, preserved, and renewed. That the, share, the shining city on a hill will continue to shine as one nation under God. I told you this week, ignore the polls. We'll get to that in a moment. And get out there and make yourself heard. But now that the election is over, well, sort of, I have some huge takeaways. First, Democrats have been true to their stated plan to interfere with the election process, particularly in Philadelphia, ironically, the birthplace of American democracy. There were plenty of reports throughout Election Day of attempts to discourage and disenfranchise Trump voters there and even to keep Republican poll watchers out. So even so, the predicted blue wave didn't appear. No, not even with record turnout. But the day showed us how deeply divided America is with an almost evenly split popular vote and blue states voting overwhelmingly Democrat and red states overwhelmingly Republican. Oregon, for example, is so deep blue that the voters re-elected a Democrat governor who shut down their economy and coddled rioters, looters, and anarchist terrorists who've been preying on the very people of Oregon. Oregon also became the first state to decriminalize possession of all drugs for personal use, including heroin, cocaine, and methamphetamine. That's just what they need, right? I mean, looking at Portland, I assumed that mind-altering drugs were already legal. Oh, well, let's move on to the Twitterverse and back to my point about polling. I tweeted that it's been utterly discredited and proven as a worthless tool, in fact, as worthless as a milk bucket under a bull. The pollsters were either dishonest or they were just plain incompetent. But either way, turn off the oven because they are done. Now, ever since I got into media more than a decade ago, I've spent some of every part of election season warning people to ignore polls. I gave the same warning to fellow commentators and pundits to no avail. You see, most polls released for public consumption are useless, and the ones taken weeks or months in advance are taken even more uselessly. On the eve election day, they'll suddenly change to reflect last-minute movements that usually aren't movements at all. They're just solid Republican support that was there all along, deliberately undercounted until the pollsters are forced to change it to the last minute to try and salvage their credibility. I think it's safe to say there's nothing left to salvage. Next up, we have squad member Ayanna Presley, who, to no one's surprise, seems to be living on another planet because she thinks businesses in blue cities are boarding up their stores in anticipation of riots and looting by, get ready for it, white supremacists. I think it's a whole lot more likely that they're afraid of the great pumpkin showing up than that. And that brings us to a couple of shame on yous. First, to the black rim glasses wearing better than you and me chattering class of coastal MSNBC elites who for four years baselessly accused President Trump of being a white supremacist. Funny thing is, the people that Trump was supposed to hate ended up voting for him in larger numbers than they did in 2016. In fact, according to exit polling, President Trump increased his share of votes from African-Americans, Hispanics, and suburban white women and shed support among only one group only, white men. How about that? And a heaping helping of shame for nearly all of the polling industry, with just a few notable exceptions. 
One of them is Trafalgar Group and Robert Cahaley, who made the best calls out of any of the polling firms this election cycle. He explained his methodology in a recent interview. Poll more than 1,000 registered voters at any given time and keep the questions short. That's it. Mr. Cahaley has been called, and I quote, a wacko by some of his fellow pollsters, but Mr. Cahaley is having the last laugh. He sure is. Finally, kudos and congratulations to Republican senators like Joni Ernst, Susan Collins, Lindsey Graham, and Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, all of whom fought off their Democrat challengers and their combined $300 million war chest. That's right, more than $300 million set on fire by the Democrats who tried to get rid of them. Well, at least they have cry in Chuck Schumer's tears to put the fire out. And before we go, a thought to chew on in this hectic time from Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu. If you're depressed, you're living in the past. If you're anxious, you're living in the future. If you're at peace, you're living in the present. And until next time, these have been the facts of the matter. Now, if you're seeing this, I know you've enjoyed that video. I mean, how could you not after all? So you know what you should do? Leave a like, click on the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell next to it so you'll always know when I have another video up for you to enjoy.